Today on Burke Makes Stuff, I get to share something with you that I'm really excited about. I just finished a project in my living room that includes uh, two things that I love, Japan and my wife. I made my wife some four inch thick, live edge, walnut, solid floating shelves a while back. And then I did some studying on something called Kintsugi. Kintsugi, K-I-N, T-S-U-G-I is a Japanese methodology for fixing broken ceramic that dates back about half a millennia. Now, it's not just fixing ceramic, it's using gold to fix ceramic and pottery. So I took those ideas, took those shelves, and smashed them together to make something beautiful. Let's do it. So this Kintsugi project has to start with a discussion of the shelves I made for my wife because they're the basis of what I'm using for the Kintsugi because there's all sorts of checks and, uh, and cracks and stuff in them that have already been repaired that need some love and fixing. Uh, but I'm not going to show you guys how I built those shelves here because there's tons of really good videos out already on how to make floating live edge shelves. If you're looking for one, by the way, April Wilkerson did an amazing one just a few months back. I'll put the link in the description below. If you also haven't checked out how she built her shop by herself with uh, with her friends and some, some guidance, you should check out that series. Uh, it massive motivator to me. Uh, April, if you're seeing this, thank you for that. There's a reason that she has over 1.3 million subscribers, guys. It's because she puts out amazing content. That's why I'm not gonna be putting out a video on how I made those shelves. Uh, it's already been done and I wanna bring value to you guys. The wood for the shelves that I made for my wife, uh, the four inch thick walnut, actually came from a table that I've had in my stewardship since 2009. Back in 2009, I was working for a company that was going out of business. They had to liquidate all of their assets and I paid a whopping $50 for this table that so many of you guys have asked questions about. This is the tree table. Uh, it has existed in many of my past videos in different forms and many of you have reached out to know about it. I cut the ends off the table. I had to figure out how to level them and to fix them because they were all twisted and warped. That got done and these things went on the wall. Then when learning about Kintsugi, I realized that all the cracks and checks that I had in the shelves still there could be really, really useful for this process. And at first I had a really simple, awesome idea. We just take the areas here where you can see like the old filler that looks like garbage and the cracks and we gild them like you would any fancy picture frame. You take gold leaf, you take gilding adhesive, you put the adhesive on, you let it get tacky, and boom, you're ready to go. So I went to the store and I was told that Martha Stewart gilding adhesive was the gold standard for, pardon the pun, but for gold leafing. And let me tell you, don't ever get it. It was absolute garbage. Aww. I don't know if it was a bad batch or what, but it didn't get sticky no matter how much I used, nor how much time I gave it to get tacky, and I pretty quickly just gave up on it and went to something that I know would work. My old standby Scotch spray mount. I love this stuff, it never fails me, and I don't think it ever will. The spray mount worked really, really well, uh, except for the fact that the more I did of this gilding on the piece, the less I liked it. Flashback. So we have one small issue. Uh, it looks like absolute look at this. It looks like a kid took a paint marker to someone's shelf and that is not the look we're going for. Uh, nor does it look in any way, shape, or form like um, Kintsugi and that just won't do. So what I have to do now is wait for the adhesive to fully dry and cure so that I can sand it all off down to bare wood again, which I was really hoping not to have to do, and then have to figure out some other way to do it. I have a couple of ideas. Uh, I'm gonna do a, a couple of test runs because I don't wanna have to, to redo the whole thing again. So I'm gonna figure out how to do it on another piece of wood, and then we will uh, we'll get back to this. So it'll be instantaneous for you. I don't know how long it's gonna be for me, but we'll find out in uh, about a second. One eternity later. Okay, after a ton of experimentation, I came up with this. Now, now, I don't even know if you can see that, but I will uh, put a close-up shot in at this point. And if you look in there, that is actually the gold in the crack, which is honestly what I'm really looking for. It's much more subdued, much more subtle than the way we had it in the other one. Mrs. Robinson, you're trying to seduce me. <laughs> so I'm gonna go to the whiteboard and explain it to you guys now. 
end of flashback. So here's the process I came up with for this. First, let's pretend we're looking at the wood and the crack from the side. In a lot of these older cracks, there's 70-year-old filler that's either loose or still in there solid, but either way, we need to get out at least the top layer of it for this. So I tried to get between an eighth of an inch and a quarter of an inch deep. So I took my time, make sure to clear out that filler, and then I checked the stability of the wood, uh, being that in some places the filler was holding it together. Wherever there was any instability or any sort of question really at all, I injected Starbond thick into the bottom of the crack for the stability, and then took the 24 karat gold leaf and crammed it down as much as I could in the crack as possible. Uh, I used an X-Acto knife, a pin, depending on where I was, anything tiny that could really let me squish it down in there. I used Starbond thin then and saturated the gold leaf. After a quick shot of accelerator, both the gold leaf soaked in Starbond Thin and the Starbond Thick underneath it would solidify, creating an extremely strong bond for both the sides of the crack and the gold within the wood. Next, I grabbed some sandpaper and made sure that there was no gold protruding from the top of the crack, and this left everything beautiful, subdued, and highlighted the crack exactly how I saw it when I originally had the idea to combine Kintsugi with these wooden shelves. Now, it took a lot of iterations to get to this point, but I can tell you having gotten to this point that this process works really well. Now I know you guys are all wanting to see those finalized awesome shelves and we're almost there. I just want to really quickly visually show you guys what this process looked like on my end. Uh, so we're going to zoom through that and then get to those amazing Kintsugi shelves. I also feel I should probably add in here just so that it's said, although I think it's obvious, this is not traditional Kintsugi. This is an homage, if you will, to Kintsugi. It is a beautiful, beautiful art form and I just wanted to pay it respect. So there you go. Great visual here of how gold leaf squishes down to almost nothing because it's so incredibly thin, while at the same time, because it's 24 karat real gold leaf, it still looks incredibly good and shiny. This is the part where things really start coming to life. You sand it flat, and then when you clean off all of that dust, and then hit it with some of the oil we're using, it looks absolutely beautiful. So let's check out the final shelves. I think they are absolutely gorgeous. Uh, there was plenty of other ways that this could have been done now that I'm thinking through it. If you have any that you can think of, add them below just to help out the community. We can all share our ideas and grow together. I hope you love those as much as I do. I think they are absolutely beautiful. Uh, my wife loves them, which is the important part. But since we are here towards the end of the video, uh, I need to ask you a question specifically because you are here at the end of the video with me. Um, a while back, when I put out the video about making the floating frame, uh, I had done a painting for that that was a whale attacking a ship, and at that point, I got a lot of feedback from you guys asking why I didn't have any merchandise out, uh, and I was flattered at the time, but I kind of put it on the back burner. I just got an email from YouTube saying because of the size of my channel, which we'll talk about in a second, um, that I can have a merch shelf, which I didn't even know what that was when they said it, uh, but I'm rethinking the idea. And while merchandise is very, very far out of my wheelhouse and something I'm not comfortable with at all, I have always believed that nothing amazing happens in your comfort zone, so maybe I'm supposed to do this, I don't know. But because you are here, and I'm assuming because you're here at the end of the video, you're probably either a diehard Burke Make Stuff fan or a big part of our community, uh, which of course matters to me, or even if you're not, um, your opinion is still welcome because you're here. Uh, the idea is, should I make merch? Should Is there a need or a want for that? Um, I have a ton of ideas, but again, very out of my wheelhouse. If you could drop a comment below just to let me know your thoughts, it would be very appreciated. Uh, it's something I'm kind of racking my brain about, and while it's not like a major component, it is something that could be fun and cool and also lead to some awesome more videos for you guys about that process and how that goes. Um, I don't know, so let me know. I make stuff, so shirts and hats and stuff would be stuff because they're stuff so the other piece of this um hey guys we um our community is, is 15,000 subscribers strong now that happened this morning at like two o'clock in the morning 15,000 subscribers um 
I don't know what to say about that. Uh, it's cool, and I'm flattered, and it's, this is a wonderful community, so I'm, I'm happy it's growing as it is. There we go. Uh, more videos coming out. I'm going to put out one right after the new year, specifically about New Year's goals, because I want to uh, I want to set some harder goals for myself uh, that you guys, of course, would be a part of and and feed into, and I appreciate that. So stay tuned for that one. But for now, uh, go watch another video. Enjoy. Um, happy holidays. Take care.